church? You want to stand up to your feet this morning? Is there any sold out lovers of Jesus in this place right now? Come on, are you excited to lift the name of Jesus high? Let's give him praise this morning as we worship to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, to the one who is worth all of our praise. Come on, church. this morning. come to raise a hallelujah because you are worthy. Amen. 
Come on, whatever season you're in, is a good season to raise a hallelujah, amen?
Hallelujah. God, you are worthy today of our whole heart. So today, God, we enter into your presence. to lift up our praise to you, but to offer our hearts, God. Church, right now in this moment, would you just, wherever you are today, would you search every chamber of your heart? And let's just offer it up to the King of Kings, every part of our heart. Leave nothing surrendered to the King of Kings. Can we just lift up a shout of praise? Yeah! Thank you, Lord. We can worship you. We can surrender to you, God. We receive love. We receive mercy and grace and victory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh!
message, your word for us is better than any message our circumstances could be telling us.
you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father, that you are speaking a better word over us this morning, God. You're speaking a better word than the media. You're speaking a better word than the news cycle. You're speaking a better word than the voices around us, God. You're speaking a life over us. You're speaking your truth to our hearts in this place this morning. And we receive that, God. We receive that from you. Scripture says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross that gave us this better word this morning, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you do not grow weary and lose heart. Church, this morning, if it feels like you're growing weary, if you feel like you're losing heart, it's because you're listening to the wrong voice. You're fixing your eyes on the wrong thing. And we need to realign our vision this morning and fix our eyes on Jesus. Look to him. Let's look away from the things of this world. Look away from the things that seem full of fear, that seem full of disappointment, that seem full of tragedy. Let's look to the one who can be the answer for that and fix that in us and for us. So God, this morning, God, we confess that we haven't been fixing our eyes on you, Jesus. Would you forgive us, God? And God, as we pray for you to reveal things, to reveal darkness in our government and to reveal sin in those around us, God, would you start with us? Would you start with our hearts, God, in this place as we choose to anchor ourselves to the faithfulness of God, to the promises of God, to who he is and he alone. And would you just bless us as we reach out and we claim your promises, God. Would you fill our hearts with that, God? Would you fill our hearts with your love in this place this morning, God? Church, let's sing this out one more time. And as we do that, would you claim his promises? Would you claim the word of God that is better than anything we are hearing from the world? Would you claim that for your life, for our community, and for our homes and our family? Would you use us to be the love of Jesus to those around us, God? We surrender to you this morning, God. We worship you this morning, God. We thank you for your presence and your spirit in this place. God, we recognize that. What an honor it is to be in your presence. God, I just pray for your blessing over us this morning as we proceed. God, as we hear the word of God, would you open our hearts and our minds to what you have for us in this place. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's give God a hand one more time. Amen. Awesome, awesome. Well, you all can go ahead and take a seat, but say hi to someone. Give them a little air high five, a long distance hug. Like they used to teach us in youth group, the air hug, the side hug. Well, welcome to City Church Rockford. We are so glad to have you all here with us today. Those of you who are physically here, but also those of you who are joining us online, we want to welcome you. We're so glad you're joining us today. Now, if you are new here, um, we want to connect with you. We, we want to get to know you. We want to know your gifts, if you have any questions. So grab that little card from the seat pocket in front of you. Fill it out. You can drop it at any of the welcome centers on your way out. 
And if you're watching online, you have a little bit of a different process. There will be a link popping up in your comments, and all you got to do is just click that link, and that will take you to a place where you can connect, where you can fill out some information. You can get more information about us and what, you know, our vision is here, what our purpose is here, how we're reaching out into the community, all that great stuff. Um, and I also want to encourage those of you who are watching online that we really want to connect with you even in that medium. We know it's kind of weird. It feels like you're just sitting alone in your living room. Um, but we have pastors who are, who are there, who are ready to take your prayer requests, who are ready to, you know, respond back to you. So just be sure um, that you reach out. If, if any time during the message there's a prayer request on your heart or anything, just put it out there and we will connect with you in that. All right, one more thing. For those of you who are physically here, we are going to be baptizing on August 2nd, so just a few weeks from now. So if that is something that's been on your heart that you've been wanting to do, um, make sure you, you sign up for that. You can do that online. You can sign up at the Welcome Center. Um, but we're excited to be starting baptisms again in this place. Well, we're going to continue to worship God now with our giving. Um, last week, we got to hear from Greg Kelly. He's the director of World Mission. Um, that's an organization, a missions organization that we support here at this church. He just shared some incredible things with us. Um, if, you, if you weren't here, go back and just watch and hear what God is doing through that organization and through the people who are investing in that, which is you and me if we are giving and tithing. So let's pray over this offering together. Oh, and by the way, there's not going to be any buckets passed. Um, you can just drop it at the bucket at the door, or you can give online, um, or you can mail your check in to the church. So there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do it um, that don't require you to, you know, touch a bucket or anything. So let's pray over this offering. Father God, thank you so much for everything that you have blessed us with, God. God, we, we now give back to you, God, what is yours. God, we ask that as we give, you would use our giving to build your kingdom. You would use our giving to spread the gospel. You would use our giving to love on those in our communities who are in need. And God, I just thank you that we have this opportunity to sow into your kingdom, God, to sow into the work that you are are doing. How refreshing to be able to give to a kingdom-minded thing. So God, we just lift this up to you. God, I pray that you would bless it. I pray that you would bless the hands and the, the time and the effort of those giving. In your name we pray, amen. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us here and online at City Church Rockford. We so appreciate all of you who have been a part of our recent blood drives. Our next blood drive will be on Monday, July 27th from 1 to 6 p.m. right here at City Church. The need for blood is greater than ever, with many drives continuing to cancel because potential host sites remain closed. And local hospitals are ramping back up to full service again. Please make an appointment and plan to join us for this event. We have a powerful event coming up for the men. Promise Keepers is uniting communities across the country for a virtual experience that will empower men of this nation to stand stronger as they walk with Christ. We will be a host church for this event, which will take place on July 31st and August 1st, Friday evening and Saturday morning. This event is free, but there will be food trucks available for purchasing food and beverages, and we'll also be giving away a number of prizes. If you're a man 16 years of age or older, please plan to attend and invite your friends as well. You can register on our website. Good news, we will be having baptisms again starting Sunday, August 2nd. So if you've been waiting for your chance to take the step in your Christian walk, you can register online now. Whether you sign up ahead of time or decide on Sunday, we will have clothing and everything else you need to participate. If you have any questions or anything we can help with, Please stop at a Welcome Center, visit our website, or call the church office. Well, good morning, church. Morning. Who stayed up too late last night? I see you, but you're here. That's awesome. Man, what is this? My kid's going to bed at midnight. I got to stop this thing. Carter, you got to start school's coming, dude, for some of you. Anyhow, um, anyhow, uh, 
<sighs> Glad to be here today. It's great to feel being with God's people in God's presence, isn't it? I want to welcome all of you online who are literally virtually worshiping and sharing with us all over the region. And uh, we bless you in your homes in the same spirit that's here is there. And uh, it's awesome. So I hope you're all blessed this morning. By the way, the offering for World Mission last week, Greg Kelly was here. And of course, we know one of the two great signs in Matthew 24, which is the spine of all biblical prophecy, uh, you, Old or New Testament, going backwards or going forwards, you read that chapter, Jesus lays it all out. But um, uh, the two main signs, one is preaching the gospel to every nation, to every people group, and we are literally, as, as we approach the end of this age, which I'll be talking about today, at that place where we're the generation that gets to finish that off. And so City Church um, is throwing in big behind world mission to become a sending unit, getting behind him. And we've taken on a $30,000 project in Miramar, as you saw last week. We took an offering to take care of this, reaching the absolutely, totally unreached. And uh, your offering last week was $15,000, which is fantastic. And as John Bon Jovi said, we're halfway there. <laughs> we need prayer and money. But uh, let's finish this off, church. I want us, I want our church to take care of this whole project. So there's a bucket right next to your, the tithe bucket on your way out. And uh, me and my wife, hey, if we didn't get enough the first time, we're going to give some more. But starting with us, the pastor is not exempt. God's speaking to every one of this. The church belongs to Jesus, not me. And we're going to get this thing done. But I want us to feel it. So pray about what God would have you give to finish this off. And we're going to pay for the whole project. And we're going to play our role in taking the gospel to the totally unreached. We're getting close to that place that that's actually gonna be a wrap in that regard. And then of course, uh, today I'll be talking about the second great sign uh, that we are actually living in the end times and then some things about where we are at and uh, what's going on in our country, what to, what to do and some things like that. Uh, one thing I would say though, uh, also, by the way, promise keepers, men, every man in this place, man, it's gonna be a tailgater like nobody's business with food trucks and everything on a Friday night. Primarily, we're focusing on Friday night, the 31st. A couple weeks from now, on a Friday night, it's gonna be a huge man party bash. Guys, put it on your calendar to be there Friday night, and uh, it'll be a God party. Food, fellowship, and some of the best speakers in the nation challenging us for where we are at right now. So uh, today, I'm, oh, by the way, well, will the announcements never cease? This is a three-part series. Not last week Greg was here, but the week before, I taught on part one, Signs of the Times, and the name of the actual subtitle was this, Balancing Our Faith with Our Civic Responsibility in These Times. It was, and I talked a little about where we're at in history, and as uh, citizens of a country, uh, uh, with a civic responsibility, how do we balance our faith? On uh, one aspect, uh, we're told to turn the other cheek and lay down our lives. The other thing, <laughs> we're told to, to, to stand for government and what's right. In the, in many of the, the uh, commands in the Bible were given on how to relate to government uh, because it was a dictatorship. But we live in a democracy which is a government by the people for the people. Our responsibility is much greater on us and as individuals. And how do we balance the message of the gospel with our civic responsibility? Because both are from God. And um, uh, we talked about that. And uh, today in part two, um, Signs of the Times, I'm going to uh, take us to the next level in this. But next week, don't miss next week. Next week, my wrap is going to be Revelation chapter 12. And I want everyone to read it this week for homework. Just read Revelation 12. And the name of my message is the longest title ever since I've been preaching. It's called The Dragon, The Woman, The Man-Child, The Saints, and The Blood. And I am going to tell you, we're going to take a blast through history to God's 
overview plan, and we're going to end up talking about the blood of Christ, which is God's nuclear weapon with present power, and how to use it, how to apply it. You know, people plead the blood and do things like that, and it's all things, but there's a very more specific way to use what the blood has done and apply it in a very specific fashion with powerful weapons. And we're going to have a a time next week. We're going to have a camp meeting next week, so don't miss that message. Today in part two, though, um, we're going to talk about uh, where things are at and uh, with Israel, with our nation. Uh, Again, how we are to be, what does God want from us in these times. And just, um, it, I want to give you one word of encouragement before I head into all this stuff. Don't be worried as I blow through all these facts, like, I, I, I got to remember that. I, I, I can't remember that. I can't keep track. Of all. I, I, don't worry about it. Just chill, because God wants to take us from point A to point B. And here's the thing. Did you ever have a salesman try to sell you something, like a, like a car? And they launch in, they say, this is a really good car. Okay, they give you the overview. And then they start going through all the stuff. And it's important that they do that. But about halfway through, you, you, you can't keep track of everything they're doing. But meanwhile, he's moving you along towards a decision, toward a close. And when he's finally done, you've forgotten half of what he said. But somehow, you're, we're here and now you're here. You're almost ready to go, you know what, I'm going to take that thing. You know, this is good. I'm going to buy it. I can't remember everything he said. And that's what I feel the Holy Spirit's going to do with us this morning. You might not remember everything I said, but you're here this morning, and when I and God is done with you, you're going to be here. And next week, you're going to be here, and we're going to move along so that our mindset and our spirits were where God wants us to be, looking at this thing, what's going on right, positioning ourselves properly, and then operating as the body of Christ in a very effective way. Actually, that changes history. Amen? Last week, we, we took the theme text, text uh, Psalm 11:3 that said, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? This was written by David during a time when Saul had lost the anointing. Israel's security was being threatened. Their foundations were being eroded. The Philistines were moving in. A spirit of fear had fallen in everybody, and David actually had to leave the temple and run and hide in the hills. And he looked back at the erosion of foundations, the, 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 the loss of spiritual legacy in Israel and what was happening. And he wrote this, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? We brought out a parallel. This is a five-minute review before I actually come to part two today. We brought out a parallel that we're at this time in the history of our country where its very foundations are being threatened and eroded. The actual, I shared last week, and by the way, if you have not heard, go back and listen to the podcast, um, not last week, but the week before, part one, and just listen. I shared a bunch of the history of our roots of our nation, starting with Columbus, Uh, whose name meant Christ bearer, uh, who literally uh, discovered the shores of America and prayed a rabbinical prayer. And then the Mayflower, the pilgrims came seeking the freedom to worship God in freedom from tyranny. And the Mayflower Compact, which became a precursor to our constitution. And we became a very unique nation with very unique roots as founded on spiritual principles, wanting religious freedom as one nation under God. The second greatest nation in all of human history. The greatest, most significant nation was the nation of Israel, founded by God and originated, it's called a theocracy, where it's a nation founded by and run by God. But the next greatest nation in all of history is the United States of America, which is one nation under God, a democracy but totally looking to God for guidance and leadership. And I believe, as we shared, that America's destiny literally is a Christian nation. The Jewish nation was the people of the book, brought the people of the law and the patriarchs and the foundation. But America is a Christian nation which has been raised up by God sovereignly to carry the light of the gospel to the nations during the time of Israel's disbursement among the nations as she was scattered and lost her legacy temporarily. A lease was given to the United States of America. You'll have to listen to the message. I can't go through it all. And 
We are to be, take the light of the gospel, and we are to be a friend and ally to the nation of Israel to the very end, and uh, literally assist with her growth, her development, and her purpose in emerging. And uh, our destinies literally are intertwined in our purpose. We're connected. And you want to know what? <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. These two greatest nations uh, uh, literally exist. And now some, uh, in fact, I want to do this. Uh, the, let me review one other thing. The gospel being preached to the ends of the earth is one of the greatest specific signs that we're at the end of human history. The other one is the rebirth and the gathering, regathering of Israel. It's very important for us to understand this. We've talked about end times, end times for years. I did and everything else. But I believe we've hit a place in human history where we're literally in the chute in an irreversible course called in Matthew 24, the beginning of sorrows, that is a shoot to the birth of a new age and the end of this age. We're in that place right now, so it's so important to realize for us to have a sense of how close we are. Matthew 24, 32 verse through 34 is literally the most significant verse that gives the greatest clue in my belief in my opinion, of the whole Bible as to how close we are to the very end. Jesus, when his disciples said, well, tell us exactly, yeah, wars, rumors of war, pestilence, and all that stuff, and we've seen it, and now the beginning of sorrows when that happens, but tell us specifically. And he talked about the gospel of the kingdom, and he says this, Matthew 24, 32, learn a lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know summer is near. Trees in the Bible are nations. The fig tree is always Israel. In fact, remember, Jesus cursed a fig tree in, in, late in his ministry because it hadn't borne fruit, because Israel hadn't produced, had rejected him, and it didn't bring forth. And he cursed the fig tree, but what he was really doing, and by the way, that was in Bethphage, which was near Bethany, the city of figs, and he just did this symbolically, but the fig tree is Israel. And it says, when you see that leaves get tender and start to come out and blossom, you know summer's near. When you see all these things, know that it is near right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away till everything, all these things have happened. So he says the generation that sees the reemergence of the nation of Israel and its rebirth and its regathering, and they see all that, should know that it's the last generation that his coming is very near, right at the very door. And um, so I think that that's an amazing thing that we are literally living. Why? Look at this. Here's some interesting facts I'd just to throw on, on this, uh, this on the fire. Um, how many years from Adam to the birth of the nation of Israel was 1948 years? You can look it up in the genealogies. And then get this. From the death and resurrection of Jesus to the rebirth of Israel was also in, in regathering of Israel and birth to a sovereign nation in our generation is exactly 1948 years. I think that's just crazy. From Adam and Eve to the birth of Israel, 1948 years. From the death and resurrection of Christ till 1948, again, the birth exact date. On May 14, 1948, Ben Gurion, the first prime minister of Israel, walked in to a group of his leaders and said, today we announce the birth and the emergence of the sovereign state of Israel. And the Israeli flag went up. And we see 1948, crazy, crazy thing. Uh, so many biblical parallels. I could just go on and on and on, I won't. By the way, Israel did have, has had 12 prime ministers. I find it fine, the parallels in history that repeat themselves. Uh, Israel's, uh, <laughs> their fourth judge was a woman named Golda Meir, their, their fourth prime minister. Hmm, Israel had a, uh, it, had, they had judges who ruled Israel. The fourth judge was Deborah, a woman. It was just kind of cool, all these different things. But get this, 1948, um, and now Isaiah 66. Can you imagine a prophet writing this down literally almost 4,000 years earlier before anybody knew anything about anything? He wrote this, he saw the boom, in one day, 
a nation emerges. It says this, Isaiah 66, 8. Who has ever heard of such a things? Who has ever seen things like this? Can a country be born in a day or a nation be brought forth in a moment? Yet no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children. Boom. Whoever has labor, and then the minute you start labor, bam, there's the child. It just doesn't go that way. The prophet's just freaking out. He, he, he hardly probably didn't even know what he was, but, but he wrote as he was inspired. Get this, in 1967, the Six-Day War, in the Six-Day War, 19 years later, Jerusalem was, came fully under control of Israel after almost 2,000 years. The Israeli flag flew over Jerusalem. Now, why do I share all this? Because Jesus said this in Luke 21, verse 24. He says, Israel will fall by the sword, go into judgment, etc., and be taken prisoners to all nations and be trampled by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. For almost 2,000 years, this happened. Jerusalem was under Gentile, which is everybody who's not a Jew, foreign control. And in 1967... The times of the Gentiles was marked to be nearing completion, nearing a whole period of time. And literally, it was set the time clock of God to favor Israel began to run again. And so this is pretty crazy that we see how close we are to the end of this age. The generation that sees these things won't pass away till everything's fulfilled. We've seen it with our eyes. I was alive and born and saw these things and have seen these things and many, 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 many more. But I'm gonna tell you, this is a crazy thing that the honor of being the generation that God says, I'm gonna bring everything to a head and the burden that I have and the weight and the purpose and the mission is on you. It's on me, it's on us. What an honor, but what a challenge. Bottom line, you don't have to retain everything I just said, but be assured, we are living in the closing days, years of this age, and the weight and the burden of the Lord for the nations and for our role and destiny as a nation and individuals is all come down, and it's resting on the church. And so I want us to be very aware. One third of the whole Bible is prophecy, and much of it is being fulfilled rapidly right in front of our eyes. It's crazy. I'll give you a little more of that pretty soon. But right now, I want to start with my message. (laughs) Part two. (laughs) I won't keep you too long, but let me just keep going with this today. Here we are. Where are we at in this current time frame with the, as a nation? Its purpose, what about our lives personally? And the fact that we're the church, God's people, wielding tremendous spiritual power. How are we to be? What are we to do at this time? Um, as I said earlier, I believe America and, you, and Israel's destinies are related and intertwined. In my first message, I shared how that is so. I shared a picture of America and Bible prophecy and uh, all of those, so I don't want to go over that. But I want to tell you that at this time, at this time, our purpose to take the gospel to the nations and be a friend of ally to Israel and her development is being threatened and eroded, and the de- America stands in the way of a quickly moving, uh, emerging new world order that desperately wants to emerge. And I believe the church in America, and America is a sovereign nation, stands in the way of that. And the devil right now, you can say, Pastor, you're talking too much politics. This isn't politics, this is spiritual. I want you to just say it, it's spiritual. It's spiritual. I am telling you, he is throwing everything he can at the United States of America during this point to push us past a tipping point as a nation out of our role in biblical prophecy and our purpose and destiny that our forefathers literally fought and died for and God originated. Listen, he is desperately trying to emerge with his agenda And I don't blame him for being, throwing all his terror and wrath. Why? He sees a huge, a 
angel on the sidelines with a key to the bottomless pit and a huge chain over his shoulder, staring at him, waiting for a few more moments before his time to wander around, lie, kill, steal, and destroy, get shot down, he gets chained up head to foot and thrown into the bottomless pit for a thousand years. I can't wait. It's a done deal already, and he can't, but he's doing everything he can to stop and hold back that moment. And his wrath and everything going on is behind the scenes right now in our country. And we need to be wise about the times we live in. We're living in crazy times. Our whole world's been hit by a pandemic. Left-wing radical Saul Alinsky had a one-liner in his Rules for Radical book, which trained a number of our political leaders, including our past president. And he said this, never let a good crisis go to waste. <laughs> Anarchist, globalist, wicked people, some of who are politicians, want to undermine our nation's foundations and purpose and are trying to do just that. A pandemic has brought a booming economy to its knees. Our nation's been torn apart by riots, anarchy, monuments torn down, and literally, and people being shot and killed, and the police violated, an insult to the nation's roots and the God who, or, who literally ordained civil law. By the way, we're all angered, and we're angered, and still angered when I think about it, for the needless death of George Floyd, which triggered, seemed to be a trigger for all this. But what about all the citizens and the little one-year-old boy who was shot, African-Americans and white people by lawless people, murdered policemen, good policemen, murdered in our streets across this nation. Where is the outrage for this stuff? Where is the outrage and the insult to a God who created civil law? It's time for the silent majority to use their spiritual weapons and speak up civically and spiritually and be who God's called us to be. Salt that holds back corruption and light that shows the pathway. By the way, all the policemen that are being murdered where is the outrage to that? I want to tell you that it's an insult to civic law, our government, and the God who created civic law. And I would like to just give a screaming round of applause to our policemen and law and order. I want somebody to send this video somewhere. There are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of godly good people all over this nation who believe that we are one nation under God with a purpose and a mandate to be a blessing to our own cities, our own country, and to the world. And it's time for us to use our spiritual weapons and engage in our civic responsibility. Even Dr. Elvita King said, we need the police, we need justice, we need law and order. <laughs> Anyhow, enough of that, my rant is over there. Look at also, you know, as I said before, I believe we've entered an irreversible time in human history, an irreversible time. We've never seen times like this. And it's headed somewhere very, very quickly. And I'm going to tell you what, in this pandemic, I believe we're seeing a dry run for an emerging new world order and a global government that wants desperately to emerge. And the enemy of our souls would love to sweep this entire country into that picture. And I believe it's God's will that that happened. You know, I think we can see how quickly government can step in anywhere and mandate and shut things down. <laughs> you know, instead of leaving safety, health, and up to our common sense of each individual, which I believe in, people want to be wear a mask. Wear a mask if you feel you need to. If you feel you need to stay home to be safe, do so. There's nothing. But what about leaving the responsibility that our Constitution literally offers up to the individuals. Instead of standing in and shutting down entire businesses, wrecking our economy, shutting restaurants down, telling people they can't even go work in the garden 
on their own property, keeping abortion clinics open as essential while saying in liquor stores, while saying in church, we can't get together and the government of California literally saying you can't sing in church, which drives me insane. Uh, but get this, literally, instead of leaving all this up to individuals, there have been lockdowns, crackdowns, uh, setting of fines, by the way, these aren't valid laws and they violate our constitution and our rights. By the way, how would you like to see this? Uh, in New Brunswick, McDonald's, how would you like to see this sign in your McDonald's? Look at this, it's crazy. Due to the NB emergency, we are required to record the name and phone number of everyone placing orders at this restaurant. Be prepared to provide this information before buying your burger. So anyhow, that's, that's just for fun. Just to say in, Church, church, do you see literally how literally overnight, you know, never waste a good crisis. Men and women have agendas for this country. There's something sinister behind the scenes working to control, control this nation and its purpose and its mandate and turn us just to another person on a chessboard, just nothing. And I'm telling you what, it's crazy. Pastor, you're getting political. It's not political, it's spiritual. It's spiritual. The prophets wrote about it before we ever existed about this. And it's not wrong to talk about it in church. One third of the whole Bible's prophecy and its right of it was written for us so that we could know how to be and what to do and stand in our place and do business with God in our country, in this world. You know, I tried to pay with cash three times in the last two weeks. Yeah. Couldn't pay with cash. A leading spiritual, a spiritual leader in this town was talking to a high level banking expert in Washington that said, literally in a period of less than a week, overnight, our cash could disappear from our society and we'd be cashless. Who wrote this 4,000 years ago that saw this? Hmm, you better believe the Bible. It's all in all, it's easy to see how our way of life and freedom could easily disappear in no time at all. Meanwhile, with all this going on, there's a battle of unprepared, unparalleled proportion going on that I've never seen and don't think there's been since the Civil War. We're at a tipping point with the destiny of our nation, its roots severed, and its prophetic role in history is in danger. A large portion of what's happening now, I'm quickly reading my notes so I can finish up. This is all uh, my stuff here, but it says, is a result of the spiritual war to displace our role and destiny, trash our economy and a president who stands for Israel and moved our embassy there in 2017. That's when all hell started to break loose because the enemy wants to divide and separate us from that. And when that big angel on the sidelines with the key and the chain starts twitching, when he sees the embassy, when he sees things prophetically that scare him to death, all hell is broken loose in this nation. We have a president, by the way, some who like and some who don't like, but at least he stands for the, for the unborn and for the lives of the innocent babies. He stands for law and order. He stands for religious freedom. We have literally a president who is a descendant of the Hebrides revival in Scotland and the Hebrides revival Bible is in the White House and a godly vice president named Mike Pence who can preach the gospel as good as I can. There are evangelical prayer meetings going on in the White House right now. We'll never get this close to having leaders who understand our roots and legacy, and the enemy is trying to undermine any authority that would stand in the way of an emerging world order, a global society, and the end of the nation of Israel and shutting down the light of the gospel with a godless system worldwide. Oh my goodness. Not to speak of that, okay. All that's going on in our country, and we see it on the news the part we can believe. And, and I'm telling you, by the way, don't it get inundated with eight hours of news on the news channel all day and then read your Bible for 10 minutes. You will get depressed. You'll get the three Ds, discouragement, depression, 
despair. Depression is now a full-blown disease. 18% of all Americans suffer with it. It's crazy. Not to speak in, in this whole thing. Another thing, uh, as we look at the end times, it's being said by multiple news sources that this whole pandemic that's threatening us all and became a key to everything that's happening originated in Wuhan, China, and was designed to destroy our economy and unseat our president. Kind of interesting, China. By the way, I tried to buy a face mask yesterday because some places you go, you can't go in, you know, and get with a face mask. And I'd, I'll pop my little face mask on uh, and to do that, I went to buy one and uh, it was 15 bucks and I noticed a little sign on it says, made in China. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. Uh, Somebody's laughing somewhere. Um, anyhow, um, do you realize what's going on in the world as we watch? China's been in the news three times this week. Do you know that China, in spite of all that's going on inside our country, that they want to replace America as the global leader on the planet right now and literally are trying to hijack our industry, our technology, and our farmland and literally conquer us from within. Experts in our defense department just, just informed our war department that if there was a battle in the Pacific, China would win. Meanwhile, Chinese investors are buying, they buy, they're hijacking technology. They bought 191,000 acres of our farmland and have the right to ship the stuff, the food from it, to China. Birth $1.9 billion dollars. I am telling you, they're trying to hijack the pork and poultry industries. There are things going on in this country within and without. By the way, um, <laughs> China appears in Bible prophecy right at the end time, right around the corner as we enter the shoot of human history. Do you know one of the horrible things that's put in Bible prophecy that's coming right around the corner? It's a reason we should all stay right with God. Get this. It's going to be a worldwide third world war that kills one third of all humanity. It's going to be unbelievable. Revelation 9.15. And guess who's in the middle of it? China. Revelation 9.15. This is just one of many things, but I'll just give you this just for you to consider. Then again, you don't need to remember it all. Just I'm moving you from here to here. The four angels who had been prepared for this hour and the day and the month of this year of the year were turned loose to kill one third of all the people on earth. I heard the size of their army, which was 200 million mounted troops. In my vision, I saw horses and riders on them who wore armor, fiery red, dark blue, and yellow. The horses had heads like lions, fire and smoke, burning sulfur billowing out of their mouth. In my vision, I saw horses and riders on them, and they wore fiery red, dark blue, and yellow horses, heads like lions, and smoke and burning sulfur pearled out of their mouth. Can you imagine 4,000 years ago, 3,800 years ago, a prophet seeing a vision of tanks shooting and billowing out fire and smoke and everything? I, they've never seen anything like it. It's interesting what they said, but I will tell you like this. China has recently boasted they're, they're the only nation in all of history to have a 200 million man army. It never was before, it will never be again. So that is them. On top of that, China's sign is a dragon and their colors are red and yellow and their army all wears dark blue. This is China in Bible prophecy. There's gonna become something so horrible that it's gonna kill two plus billion people. Now I'm telling you, this is in the Bible. And I'm not the least bit scared about it. In fact, it's debatable whether the church will even be here. But I will tell you this, it's coming right down the road. In short, let me just wrap all this up because I could go on and on. We are headed to an irreversible time in human history, full of trouble, horror, and judgment. But it may be, and I have a theory about this. I believe this is prophetic, but it's me telling you it's not the Bible. That if, as we repent for this country, that God will give us another season of prosperity and restore the broken places. I believe we could see a massive spiritual har harvest. I believe it's coming. I also believe we will and are being rescued 
in this time from being swept into a global government that is quickly emerging worldwide. And if God is gracious to us and turns our country around, I believe we will become more and more isolated as time goes on. We will lose our absolute sovereignty, but we will still be a powerful, dangerous people, and people will be afraid to touch us and leave us alone. And our friendship with Israel will be a real lifesaver for them and a relationship that will remain intact until God's purposes for us are finished. I say these things with great, with a real sense of years and years of study mixed with the Holy Spirit, mixed with my mindset. This isn't God talking necessarily, but I believe as your pastor, I believe if we will repent from our sins, and we will repent for the sins of this country every single day. There's 107 days till our elections. It's not all about just the elections. But if we will pray 107 days every day, get up and repent for our sins and repent for the sins of the country and take time to actually pray for our country, its purpose, its destiny, and leaders, God who's in heaven will look down and you'll go, you know what, they're serious. And if my people who are called by my name will humble myself and really look to me, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive all their sins, and I'll heal their land. Our destinies are intertwined, Israel and the United States. That word applied first to Israel, but it applies as a principle to nations, specifically our nation. And so I would like every man, woman in this place, every person who's listening across this region to make a commitment to pray and repent for their sins first of all, and then repent for the sins of the nation. Stand in the gap. You know, Daniel, when he saw the 70 year captivity of of Israel coming to a close, he didn't just fatalistically say, oh cool, it's almost done. It says, I understand by studying the books and prophecy where we were in history, and I sought to pray to God and repent for the sins of the country that had got us to this place in the begin with. And he did it, and he identified himself as one of the sinner. You see, the world's not gonna repent, but we can. And you know what else? We can repent for them. Whoever sins it says you retain, they're retained. Whosoever sins you remit, they're remitted. We have tremendous power as the church. We don't go out and burn statues, shoot people, scream and hate. Our battle's not against flesh and blood. It's against spiritual darkness and wickedness in heavenly high places. And we can rip it all down by praying, by repenting. So what does God want for us? That's what he wants for us. Civic responsibility of standing as a citizen, giving, voting, serving, letting our voice be heard. But even more than that, as the people of God, letting the thunderous voice of worship and intercession for the way maker to make a way for us. And if, if we will take this seriously, we will not be swept up into a global world system and the horror that it occurs as a result. And our purpose as a nation, a Christian nation, as a bastion of the gospel will continue. We will see a great harvest of souls. We'll also have, I believe even in history, as I look at the timetable, there's time for a season of blessing and prosperity yet for us. But we gotta be like Abraham, my last word. It says, Abraham, our father, was strong in faith, and he says, against hope, against all hope, and contrary to any hope, which it looks hopeless right now, he believed in hope, was strong in faith. He contemplated his own body and his inability to do what needed to be done. He contemplated Sarah, who also couldn't have children, was beyond hope. He recontemplated, he faced it. He didn't just pretend it didn't exist. And then it says he was strong in faith and against all hope, he believed anyhow. And he says from him, as good as dead, sprang the nation of Israel, the sand of the seashore, and the church, the stars of the heaven. That's where your DNA is. So church, be like David. When all of Israel was in fear, he ran to the battle. He ran to the giants. He ran straight at it and says, I'll take out this uncircumcised.
circumcised Philistine. It's time for us to put on our war clothes, begin to live godly, begin to worship, begin to sing, begin to pray, begin to repent, and God's going to heal this thing. He can do it. That is the word of the Lord to the body of Christ nationwide. Share this message with anyone you know. It's what our church and the church in America needs to hear right now. I'm going to close with this verse. I preached half my message. I'll close with this verse. If you're out there and you don't know Jesus, you better run to the mercy seat. And we who are alive and heard this word, upon whom the end of the ages have come. Here's what Peter said. But the day of the Lord will come, Peter 3, as a thief in the night, with, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. That's nuclear, flat out. Both the earth and the works in it will be burned up, and since all these things will be dissolved, that's what happens. What manner of persons are you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Jesus said, heaven and earth is going to pass away, but my words will remain forever, and he that does the will of God abides forever. May that be true of us. Amen? Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're listening on Facebook, YouTube, God is talking to you right now about your responsibility to go all in and say, God, give me an undivided heart, all in to you. And if you don't know Jesus, you're on the outside looking in and you feel something inside of you going, man, I need to be right with God. You can get right with him today because Jesus, God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die for your sins so you didn't have to pay for him. You have two choices, die in your sin and pay for him yourself forever, forever or embrace the one who died for you. Receive his forgiveness and his grace and eternal life. If that's you and you wanna pray that prayer, a simple prayer of asking, he'll just turn the light on in your spirit and you'll be born again. And literally, if you died this afternoon, you'd go to heaven instead of going to hell. If that's you today, first in the room and then all across this region, if that's you, no one, we're not gonna call anybody forward. We'll all pray together in a minute. Don't be self-conscious, but if that's you and you want to know for sure, slip your hand up, put it up, put it back down. Don't miss this moment to get right with God. Put your hand up high if that's you. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, put your hand over your heart to show your response. And pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, I admit I'm a sinner. I need your grace. I believe you died on the cross for me. And you rose again. I ask you into my heart. Forgive my sins and make me your child. I receive your grace. Thank you for saving me. I will follow you. Lord, I pray for each of these across this whole audience, online and here, who asked you and who prayed that prayer. God, as you turn the light on in your spirit, we cancel every plan the devil had for them in Jesus' name. Open a new and living way before them and teach them how to walk in your grace. God, as far as the rest of us, help us to fully embrace with an undivided heart our civic responsibility as citizens in this country and as citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Lord, help us to pull the rope behind the hedge in prayer and repentance for this nation. Touch each one of your people, Lord, to carry the light and the salt mantle you've given us. And Lord, we believe you to heal our country. We repent right now for the sins of the country from the highest places right to the lowest city street. Forgive the sins of this nation, Lord. Hear our prayer of repentance and heal our land, we pray. We ask this things and we ask him all in Jesus' name and everybody said, amen. Give God a hand and thank him for his grace.
I want everybody to stand up. We're going to close with Waymaker. Last week and during the week, I mean, we've been running into things. We've seen suicide stopped. We've seen people healed. Babies' lives on the street that were going to be aborted, lives saved. God is working in all of your situations. I prayed with a number of you just in the last week as literally this pandemic has brought so much to the surface. But as it comes, don't be afraid. Run to it. Wrap arms of grace around it. Believe for the impossible. And when we sing Waymaker in a moment, I want you to sing it over your personal life, over your family, your world of influence in this nation. Let's declare it because there's spiritual power. God's in heaven and he's watching the smoke and cloud of incense that rises from this place.
God is a miracle worker. There's peace and freedom in this house today. We have this confident hope this morning. I want you to remind yourself with me this morning, even when. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. 